In this video, we're going to create our service layer. Now the service layer is basically the main entry point into your business logic that really implements the use cases that your uh, application supports. So its responsibility will be to use the data source to retrieve all the data that it needs. And for now, it's going to be very trivial because that's not any business logic or any transformation that it will do on this data. But we're going to again do this with test driven development and we're going to see a new Spring Boot annotation and how it all works together. And in this video, we're also going to look at mocking using mock K. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So in our IDE, I'm going to go ahead and add a new package again here. So this one, I'm just going to call service. And in here, I'm going to create a new Kotlin class or file. And this time I'm just going to call it bank service. So this class represents our service for the bank use case. And similar to the repository, we're going to use the service annotation, which again, just like the repository annotation, tells Spring Boot to make this bean or this class or an object of it available at runtime. So it's available in the application context and it can be injected via dependency injection into your other objects and classes. And again, this also conveys meaning to other developers reading your code. So they know this is a service level bean. So this thing will be responsible for things like calling some data source maybe, or maybe handling or mapping exceptions, performing transformations on the data, whatever the use case or the business logic is for that use case. And by the way, if you have a bean or a class that isn't really a service or a repository, or you're not too sure, and you just want a generic bean that is available for component scanning and therefore for the application context, you can just use the component annotation. And really repository and service are pretty much just that. So they are a meta annotation that applies the component annotation. So if you're not too sure, you're not really in the service layer or it's not really a repository, you can always use the add component annotation for just a generic uh, bean that's available in your Spring application context. All right, so with this, let's again go ahead and create our test class. Again, make sure you have JUnit 5 selected up here and then I'm just gonna hit okay. So with this one, we now again have to make a decision whether we want a pure unit test meaning that we really just want to test what the service class does and we mock out the data source that it uses. Or do we want to have an integration test that really goes maybe through the service uh, bean, but also uses the actual data source to retrieve some data and we see if those two work together just fine. Now, what I'm going to do here in this video is I'm going to use a pure unit test. So I'm going to make this a, a mock data source in the test. And I'm just going to see or check that the service actually calls its data source as it should. And I'm doing this because in the next video, when we create the controller, I'm going to create an integration test there that really uses the service, the data source, and really test that all of these components work together as they should. So for this level here, for the service level, we can just use mocking. So let's start off by thinking about what we want to test. So I'm going to use the test life template again, and I'm going to import the test dependency or the test annotation. Make sure it's really from JUnit Jupyter API and not another test annotation. And here I'm just going to say it should call its data source, let's say to retrieve data or to retrieve banks. And then I'm going to skip the given part for now. And I'm going to say, um, we want our bank service dot, let's say get banks. And again, we get um, some errors here. And this is again using test driven development. Um, so this one actually is just because I don't have the property in the test itself. So I'm going to create this one. And here again, I'm just using, um, this as a POJO. So again, in this test, I'm not using any dependency injection. I'm just creating these, um, these objects manually. So for now, I don't really need it yet, but I'm gonna uh, use a mock data source or just a data source of type uh, bank, bank data source. 
and this will later on be a mock. So for now, I'm gonna comment it out. But in our bank service, what we don't have yet is we actually want to have a property. So again, we're using a primary constructor here. And so this one needs its data source. So it needs some object of type bank data source. And now going back to the test, we now again have an error here. So we need to provide some data source. So now what I need here is a mock object for this data source. And to create this mock, I'm gonna add a new library to our Gradle dependencies. That's really good for creating mocks in tests with Kotlin. And this is also gonna be part of the test implementation configuration here, which just really means in Gradle that the classes that you import or this dependency will be available in your test classes or your test uh, resources, but not in your production code. And the dependency I want here is from io.mockk and it's just called mockk and currently the version is 1.10.4. So once you have this, just make sure you load the Gradle changes. You can also enable auto import so it does this automatically. And then once that's done being downloaded, you can verify in your external libraries down here that it's really been downloaded successfully. Okay, so once Gradle is done downloading everything, make sure you have io.mockk down here, and then you should be ready to go. So back in our test class, we can now simply go and say, uh, our object of type bank data source is supposed to be a mock with this function mockk. Now there are quite a few options here that you can see as the parameters. We're gonna use one of those later on, but for now you can just use this object and put that into your bank service, and then the bank service property is ready to go. So the next thing that would fail this test is that we don't have a get banks method yet in the bank service. So let's create this. And this of course should also create a, or return a collection of our bank entities. And in here for now, let's really just again do the minimum. So we're gonna return an empty list. All right, clean up the white space a little bit. And then back in our test class, we can now verify that when we call the bank service dot get banks, um, it actually calls its data source. So that's what we want to test in this uh, test case. We want to make sure, or we want to verify that our data source dot retrieve banks has been called. And this verify method here, if you go into it, this is coming from mock K. And what it does is it really just verifies that the method call that you put in here was being done in the realm of your test case. And we can also make sure that it is called exactly once, which is what we expect here. So the service shouldn't call it three times or whatever. It should really just call the data source and it should call it exactly once. So with that done, let's go ahead and run this test case. All right, so here we go. We have our failing test case and it's saying that the verification failed because bank data source that retrieve banks was not called. So let's go to our bank service. And in here, what we really wanna do is we wanna return the data source dot retrieve banks. And that's really all it has to do for now. So let's go ahead and run the tests again. All right, we still get an error in here. It says, no answer has been found for bank data source dot retrieve banks. So what's going on now? Let's go back to our test class. And in here we're calling bank service dot get banks. And what's happening is if we now look at our get banks, it's calling data source dot retrieve banks. So it's doing what we expect, but the problem is that we don't even get to our verify block down here. Instead, the code runs into this call to the data source and it doesn't know what to do with it because the data source, if you recall, is really just a mock object. And if you have such a mock, you have to specify its behavior for every method call that you expect on it. So what we can do is we can say, given that every data source dot retrieve banks returns, uh, let's say a list of banks or well, for now we can also just return empty list. It doesn't really matter. We just wanna test that the data source is being called. And with this, let's go ahead and run the test case again. 
and then it passes just fine. Now, what we can also do to simplify this a little bit, because we don't really care about this return value and we don't really care about what the mock exactly does, we really just want to verify that if we call the service, that it really just calls its data source. And therefore, we don't really need this and we don't really need any given block. And what we can do here is we can say that this mock should be relaxed. Now, what this means is whenever a method is called on it, it will just return some kind of default value. So if it's encountering a method that's supposed to return a collection like retrieve banks, most likely it's just going to return empty list by default. If it's an int, it's going to return maybe a zero, maybe a one. You shouldn't really care about it because it's relaxed. If you want to specify explicitly what it should return, you should use the uh, every and then return syntax. Okay, so that makes it easier. Then also we can clean this one up because we don't really need the return value here and then rerun our tests. And we're still green, everything's still looking fine. So now we're in the refactor phase of our red green refactor cycle. So we can see in our bank service, there's something we can refactor, which is to convert this to an expression body and then we have just a single line of code because it's a very trivial uh, indirection just to the data source. All right, and that's it. We have our service layer with our first method implemented. Of course, there's going to be more for the post and put requests later on. We also have our test ready. We've used mock K, which is a really nice mocking framework. If you're interested in more about JUnit 5, test-driven development, unit testing, or mocking with mock K, please let us know in the comments below. Also note that again, the bank service test here is completely independent of Spring Boot or the Spring Boot application context. We are again using POJOs, so we're initializing all the objects ourselves, but we're gonna do this differently in the next video where we're gonna take a look at controllers and rest mappings. If you like this video, please make sure to leave a like below and I'll see you again in the next one.